Now at 6 on Time Warner Cable News, on ABC 45, the son-in-law of evangelist Billy Graham dies two days after being found unresponsive in his home swimming pool, what the family is saying about his death. Also, Verdict Watch continues in the trial for a North Carolina police officer charged with voluntary manslaughter. And Tiger tees off at the Wyndham Championship Pro-Am event this morning with the Triad native. Our J.B. Ricks tells us all about it live from Sedgefield Country Club. You're watching Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Sharon Stone. Those stories are coming right up. First here at 6 o'clock, meteorologist Terry Bennett is here with the first check of your weather on the ones. And you've got some concerns about severe weather in the area, Terry. We do, especially over Davie County right now, Sharon. We have a severe thunderstorm warning, which will continue until 645 for Davie County. I'm going to start adding in layers here. First of all, you can see the torrential downpours that are moving through the county. This evening, additional showers and storms possible up until about midnight. Tomorrow, another hot, humid day with afternoon showers and storms. But Sharon, tomorrow is the last day we're going to be talking about the humidity for the rest of this week. And that's good news as we move toward the weekend. Those details coming up. The cab of a tanker truck has caught fire on Wendover Avenue in Greensboro. Let's show you a picture taken by our Amara Amokwe. You can see the fire is out at this time. We're told the driver was able to exit the cab safely. Now, this is in the westbound lane on Wendover near Big Tree Way and the exit ramp for Interstate 40. Drivers are asked to avoid this whole area and take alternate routes. It could take hours to clean this up. The son-in-law of Billy Graham died today. Danny Lotz had a heart attack while swimming earlier this week. He spent nearly two days in ICU. Amy Elliott spoke with one of Lotz's friends and former UNC teammates. She has more from outside the family's home in North Raleigh. And Graham Lott posted on Facebook this afternoon about her husband's passing, calling him God's gladiator. Uh, it has certainly been a tough week for the family. On Monday, Danny was found unconscious in their home swimming pool uh, and has been posting updates online, asking for prayers um, as he has been in the hospital. Now, today she mentioned her husband of 49 years has suffered health problems for many years, diabetes. He was going to dialysis three days a week and had lost sight in one eye and hearing in one ear. Now, Rex Hospital said Danny's heart stopped while he was swimming Monday and passed away just after 1130 this morning. Now, Lotz was part of the 1957 UNC Men's Basketball Championship team. Uh, we got in touch with his former teammate and friend, Lenny Rosenbluth, who says he was looking forward to seeing Lotz soon at a team reunion and will certainly be missed. Our 57 team became more than just teammates. We all became more like brothers. I called Danny, oh, I would say maybe three weeks ago, and I said, Danny, we're having a reunion. And I told him, Danny, don't do anything silly and get sick on us. And he just laughed and said, no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll be there. Now, we also received a statement from Danny and Ann's home church, Providence Baptist Church in Raleigh. It says in part, Danny and Ann were members at Providence for many years, where both served faithfully in many capacities. Both were known for their deep love for Jesus Christ, for teaching his word and helping others come to know and love him. We have maintained a warm and wonderful relationship with Danny and Ann all these years and grieve deeply at news of Danny's death. He was a good friend to so so many of us and a champion for Christ. That's certainly a sad ending to the story. Uh, we will have much more on Lotz's passing a little bit later on this evening. Reporting in Raleigh, Amy Elliott, Time Warner Cable News. Jurors spent most of the day deliberating. Still, no verdict in the Randall Carrick case. The Charlotte Mecklenburg police officer is charged with voluntary manslaughter for the shooting death of Jonathan Farrell in September of 2013. While we're still waiting for a decision, it appears the jury is making progress based on their questions to the judge. Our Kate Geyer has more about the types of questions they asked. Well, it didn't take them long to uh, come back and ask the judge. Around 11 o'clock, they came back asking for a substantial amount of information. That includes Officer Carrick's interview he gave at police headquarters the morning of the shooting and CMPD's training policies. Now, all these questions could suggest they still have a lot of work to do back in the jury room. 
Jurors in the Randall West Kara case spent an hour and a half deliberating Wednesday morning before requesting eight things. The defense did object to one thing going back to the jury room. They did not want the state mandated use of force continuum to go back with jurors. The judge sent that back and all the other jurors to continue their deliberation around 2:15. We didn't see them again till they were sent home for the evening. Reporting from the courthouse, Kate Geyer, Time Warner Cable News. Major athletes teed off at the Pro-Am this morning at the Wyndham Championship. A few are causing big excitement for this year's tournament. Our JB Ricks has been covering all the action. He joins us live from Sedgefield Country Club with more. JB. Hey Sharon, yes, it was a special day here at the Sedgefield Country Club. Two of the sports greats, Tiger Woods for the PGA and Chris Paul, the Winston-Salem native, teeing off at the same time in the same group for today's Pro-Am. Lots of fans all over the place, and there was a lot of competition involved with their fun. It was a morning of firsts at the Sedgefield Country Club for Wednesday's Wyndham Pro-Am. First time Tiger Woods played the full course at Sedgefield. And it was also a first glimpse for some fans to see one of golf's greats up close and personal. But most importantly, it was the first time Winston-Salem native and NBA superstar Chris Paul got to team up with the 14-time major champion. We had a bunch of fun uh, playing with, uh, with Chris was, was a blast. Um, you know, obviously a, a hell of an athlete, but uh, he's a great dude to play with and we had a lot of fun. You can compete and still have fun. And I think we, we managed to do that today. Uh, Mr. McConnell, as well as Franz, Franz who I've played every year in this thing with, uh, it's such a great tournament, and I was just like everybody else who was tracking Tigers every, every move ever since they said that he may play. To actually play 18 holes and enjoy it that much, um, he probably doesn't even realize it, but he's the reason why I even play golf. And there are many others who feel the same way. There's no denying what Tiger has done for the game, and his peers recognize his presence at each stop throughout the PGA Tour. He's kind of like the Arnold Palmer of our generation in terms of he, he's a figure. No matter how he plays, people want to follow him. And I, from what I understand, that's how Arnold was. You can tell how passionate the local people uh, and everyone involved in the tournament here are about this tournament. And, you know, it means such a great deal to them to have Tiger Woods in the field. Woods, who will be fighting for his playoff life this week, already has a sense of what will be in store for him when it comes to the fans here in the triad. It's kind of fun. I mean, this is a like a, um, a like a, a small town atmosphere. You know, they they come out and support the event for for years. And Davis says he's played this thing forever and um, has the, the, he sees the same people each and every year in the same spots. And uh, it's even though he won at the other golf course, but he says this coming over here, uh, people have been fantastic. And he see, as I said, he still sees the same people all these years. All right, coming up in sports, we'll hear more from Tiger Woods and what he thought about his first full 18 holes here at the Sedgefield Country Club. For now, we're live here at the Sedgefield Country Club. JB Ricks, Time Warner Cable News.